I can identify the exact moment when my journey to becoming a professional music listener began. It was at a Led Zeppelin concert at the Forum Arena in Los Angeles when I was 20 years old. Hundreds of concerts later, I'd still rank it as one of the best I've ever seen. Robert Plant was at the height of his fame as a rock god, mesmerizing the crowd with his vocals, while guitarist Jimmy Page, clad in a black silk suit embroidered with orange and crimson dragons, struck incendiary power chords. But as the concert approached the halfway point, the band still hadn't performed classics like Kashmir and Stairway to Heaven, I realized that it was time for me to leave. It broke my heart to go. Music was the truest source of passion and meaning in my life, and the concert had lifted me to a state of pure rapture. But if I wasn't home by 10.30 p.m., there would be hell to pay. Not from my parents. My mother had died when I was 14 years old, and I no longer lived with my father. I had dropped out of high school at age 17 and married an older boyfriend, thinking that matrimony would be a quick ticket to security and independence. Instead, my marriage had become a trap of desperation and loneliness. My husband resented my attraction to music, and if I didn't return home by his curfew, I would be met at the door with jealous wrath, or worse. So as Paige launched into the acoustic arpeggios that opened Bronyar Stomp, I apologized to my bewildered friends and solemnly made my way to the exit. I felt so powerless and low. All my life I had enjoyed an intense, irresistible, and what seemed like a necessary relationship with music. When I listened to music, every note felt important, and every lyric felt true. Yet I'd been intimidated into abandoning one of the most exhilarating musical experiences of my life to return to a place of isolation. Unexpectedly, defiance overtook me. I stopped in my tracks and in dramatic Scarlet O'Hara style, leaned back, raised my eyes toward the rafters and vowed, one day I will return to the forum and mix live sound for an amazing band. It was an utterly implausible vow. For starters, I wasn't entirely sure what a sound mixer actually did, let alone how to become one. I couldn't play an instrument. I didn't sing. I didn't know any musicians or anyone in the music industry. I stitched heart valves on a biomedical assembly line for a living. Yet this improbable musical fantasy had been germinating in the back of my mind ever since I'd seen a photograph on the back of a Sonny and Cher album when I was very young. It showed a man sitting in front of an elaborate console of knobs, buttons, and sliders. The label below him read, Sound Engineer. When I saw this photo, I felt, more than thought, He's making records but not playing an instrument. Maybe I could do that. 